Aftermarket parts have been one of my favorite features added into MW3. Being able to completely change how a weapon works with a conversion kit is such a cool concept that I took every single one of them into zombies to see what is the best one. And by all of them, I mean the ones that have been released so far. To test them, I used them against the Mega Abomination and HVT Mega Abomination and the Stormcaller, as well as zombies in the low, medium, and high threat zones. I also upgraded every weapon the exact same, getting them to pack a punch three in epic rarity. Now let's get into the ranking. Coming in at number 10, the worst AMP is the Jack Nightshade Rifle Kit for the DG58 LSW. This gives a boost to mobility, handling, tax stance spread, and the rate of fire at a cost of bullet velocity, range, damage, and mag capacity. And here's the build that I used for it. To get a baseline for the damage, I used this unpacked and unupgraded in all three tiers of zombies, and in tier 1, it did pretty good like most guns would. Tier 2 was a bit concerning, not doing a whole lot of damage, and in tier 3, you'd be better off waiting for the zombies to decompose than use this weapon. But after pack-a-punching, the mag size doubled from 40 to 80, but it was still struggling to take down zombies even after grabbing perks. There was also this weird bug with the laser sight where it just did whatever the hell it wanted. Anyways, against the Mega Abomination, it did surprisingly alright, being able to take him down in 2 minutes and 5 seconds. Against the HPT Mega Bomb, it did basically the same, only taking 10 more seconds to kill it. So if it has anything going for it, it can take down Mega Abominations pretty easily. The Stormcaller is a completely different story. It couldn't do enough damage to offset the amount of health that it was stealing from me. Even trying to shoot its hand to stop the attack wasn't enough. I had to keep leaving the storm to refill my ammo and repair my gas mask. On top of this, it took almost 10 minutes to get his health somewhat low, but that was with the help of another player who saw me struggling, so they shot at him from outside the storm. Overall, I wouldn't recommend this weapon, but it does look pretty cool. At number 9 is the newest addition to the AMPs, and that's the Jack Signal Burst Conversion Kit for the Holger 556. This turns the weapon into a 4 round burst and boosts the bullet velocity, gun kick control, recoil control, hip fire, and tax stance spread. All at the cost of fire rate, sprint to fire, and ADS speed. And this is the build that I use. It can handle itself against tier 1 zombies, but weirdly, it didn't one-shot the zombies. It left them almost exactly at 1 HP, which wasn't a good omen for the gun. In tier 2, it took 2 mags into a group of zombies just to take down a hellhound, and 3 mags to get our first zombie kill. So you can imagine how it went in tier 3. It was so bad, I could have crafted a biological weapon with my bare hands in room temperature IQ before I could take down a hellhound with it. After upgrading and pack-a-punching it, it was still taking a little too long to kill tier 3 zombies for my liking. But its mag size is tripled when pack a punch going from 40 to 120, so at least it's got that. Where it gets the edge over the DG58 is against bosses. Against the Mega Abomination, it did pretty good, taking it down in a minute and a half. I actually took out the HVT Mega Bomb faster than the regular one, doing it in a minute and 13 seconds. But to be fair, in the first fight, I was dicking around a bit, buying some shit at the shop in between shooting at him. But either way, it did pretty good against them. The Stormcaller fight was the opposite. It took 8 minutes and 19 seconds to get it low enough so a brain rotted zombie could finish the job. Overall, pretty bad weapon that is decent against Mega Abomination. At number 8, we got the Jack Headhunter Carbine Kit for the Rival 9. This turns the weapon into a 3 round burst and boosts the bullet velocity, range, gun kick, recoil control, and damage. At the cost of ADS, sprint to fire, and movement speed while lowering the hip fire and tax stance spread. And here's the build that I used for it. This thing is the LeBron. Ron James of tier 1. It does pretty decent in tier 2, and obviously isn't the greatest in tier 3 before upgrades. With Pack-A-Punch, it can two-shot a tier 3 zombie close up with headshots, but without them, it'll take a few bursts to take down. Probably why it's called the Headhunter. It also gets 100 rounds in the mag after pack. Against the Mega Abomination, it does alright, taking it down in 2 minutes and 4 seconds. Against the HVT, we took it out in 2 minutes flat, thanks to this little wall that I could keep jumping over to confuse the dumbass zombies. Where this really falls flat is against the Stormcaller. It doesn't do enough damage to be a serious threat against it, and it took me 8 minutes and 12 seconds to take the bastard down. Overall, it's a decent weapon against zombies and Mega Bombs if you're accurate, but nothing crazy. At number 7 is the Jack Heretic Carbine Kit for the MTZ 762. This turns the battle rifle into an assault rifle, and I'm going to act like I know the difference between the two. Doing this will give it a buff to mobility, handling, rate of fire, recoil, and gun kick control, while lowering damage and bullet velocity. And this is the build I use. In tier 1, it's got no issues. In tier 2, it can still handle some business. And in tier 3, it can actually do a bit of damage, but it's going to take you a bit to kill anything. 
Not too bad for no upgrades. With upgrades, it's honestly a little disappointing considering the damage it did without them. I expected it to do much better, but it's still pretty decent. Also, the mag size goes from 40 to 80 when packed. Against the Mega Abomination, it wastes no time kicking its ass, taking it down in a minute 37. Against the HVT, it takes a bit longer because I was getting handled by the zombies, but in two minutes and 22 seconds, we got it in the ground. But this took the Stormcaller out faster than any weapon on this list. Kinda. It only took us a minute 34 to take it down, but that's mainly because it was stuck in the ground the whole time. Overall, it's a pretty good weapon, but it's just missing a bit of damage to put it over the top. At number six, we got the Jack Raven kit for the MCW. This changes the ammo type on it to 0.300 rounds. If you don't know what those are, just leave a comment calling a magazine a clip and it should summon someone capable of answering that for you. But using this will buff your fire rate, close range damage, and mobility. All while lowering damage, recoil control, bullet velocity, velocity, and range. And this is the build that I use. In tier 1, it's got no problems. In tier 2, it can take out some zombies, but might take a whole mag to do it. In tier 3, it does a whole lot of nothing, until it's pack-a-punched. Then zombies get ran through like mothers on Xbox. Doubling the mag size from 40 to 80 helps as well. And against the Mega Bomb, it continues to do well, taking it out in a minute 27. I honestly could have taken it out faster, but I had a helpful Harry that was in my back pocket the whole time I was fighting it. And I was proven right because against the HVT bomb, the MCW shredded it in less than a minute, only needing 58 seconds to take down the three-headed bitch. The fight against the Stormcaller was a bit of a different story. It did some pretty decent damage to start, but I ended up running out of ammo and had to run a bit out of the way to refill it. And I ran out of ammo a second time, but instead of going on a journey to grab the ammo again, I stepped outside of the storm so that my throwing knives could actually deal damage to the zombies and they could give me some ammo drops. It ended up taking five minutes and 41 seconds to kill it, and probably would have taken longer if I didn't pick up an insta-kill towards the end of the fight. But overall, the weapon is pretty good, it just really suffers from a lack of ammo. Now that we're halfway through, I figured I'd give some dishonorable mentions that didn't quite fit the list. The elephant in the room is the Tear Jack Beholder Rifle Kit. This was supposed to release with the completion of the Season 1 Week 3 Challenge, but still, weeks later at the time I'm recording this, you still cannot equip it. There's also a few aftermarket part attachments, but most of them are just optics that are boring as hell. But there is an underbarrel flamethrower attachment, the Jack Purifier, that's pretty decent. But I've already dedicated a whole video to it, so if you're interested, I'll put a link to it on screen and in the description. Last and probably least is the DM-56. You can equip the Holger 556's conversion kit to this gun, but whenever I try to use it in zombies, it didn't work. When spawning in with the attachment, it would just remove itself. So maybe it'll work in the future, or I'm just more dumb than I thought was possible. Anyways, number 5 is the Broodmother .45 kit for the WSP-9. This gives .45 rounds to the SMG. Using this will boost your damage, gun kick control, aim stability, bullet velocity, and range, but will impact your fire rate, ADS, sprint to fire, and movement speed. This is the build I used for it. In tier 1, zombies don't stand a chance. In tier 2, it can still hold its own. And in tier 3, it wasn't doing a whole lot without having to reload every few seconds. After upgrading it, it'll slap some zombies around, but reloading is still an issue with the mag size going from 22 to 44. But the slapping don't stop with zombies. Zombies. It took down a Mega Abomination in a minute 29, and it took out the HVT in 2 minutes and 33 seconds. Against the Stormcaller, it could lay out some damage, but I ran into the same problem of the other weapons where I'd run out of ammo and have to leave the storm and take a few zombies out to get ammo back. Overall, this is a pretty high damaging weapon, but the low ammo count in the mag really holds it back. At number 4, we got the Jack Annihilator Bullpup Kit for the Pull Mount 762. This turns the LMG into a bullpup style rifle, giving it boost to its mobility, handling, rate of fire, ADS speed, hip fire, and tax stand spread. This will cost you some recoil control, damage range, velocity, velocity, and weapon swap speed. But this is the build I used for it. In tier 1, it has no problems. In tier 2, it can hang. And in tier 3, it can do some damage, but you'll need some patience to get some kills. After pack-a-punching, the mag size goes from 200 to 400, giving you plenty of ammo to tear through some zombies. The damage isn't half bad either, but the reload is dangerous, so make sure you keep track of your ammo. This slaps the Mega Abomination, taking it out in just a minute 20. It did basically the same thing against the HVT, just a bit longer with it taking 2 minutes and 55 seconds. Most of the time during this fight was me switching to my fists and trying to create distance between me and the big bastard, so I wasn't getting bit as often and to try to bait it into using its laser. Fighting the Stormcaller, I had a bit of the same issues. 
I even needed to leave the storm a few times to get ammo, but I was mainly going to replenish my decoy, so I had some uninterrupted time shooting at it. All in all, it took 6 minutes and 28 seconds to take it down, but overall, it's a pretty good weapon, really held back by its movement and reload speed, almost the exact opposite of the WSP-9. At number 3 is the Jack Ferocity Carbine Kit for the Renetti. This converts it from a pistol to an SMG, giving you full auto fire, access to tax stance, better aiming idle sway, and better bullet velocity and range. But you'll take a hit to every speed stat, lowering ADS, sprint of fire, sprint, and movement speed. And this is the build that I used for it. In tier 1, it handles business. In tier 2, it can still do some work. And in tier 3, it does some decent damage. But once we pack a punch it, the mag size doubles from 50 to 100 and it uses that extra ammo to slap some zombies around. It does pretty well against the Mega Bomb, taking it out in 2 minutes and 20 seconds. And it did basically the same against the HVT, only needing 2 more seconds to take it down. The Stormcaller fight took a little longer with 4 minutes and 9 seconds, but it held its own. I only needed to run and grab ammo once while fighting. Overall, this is a fun weapon and performed pretty well no matter where we used it. Number two is a weapon that you're probably familiar with, and that's the Akimbo Brace Stock for the WSP Swarm. This gives you two WSPs, obviously, while increasing the hip fire spread and weapon swap speed. This will cost you rate of fire, damage, sprint of fire, and movement speed. And here's the build that I used for it. This can handle zombies in tier 1 and in tier 2 with no problems. In tier 3, you can deal some damage, but you'll end up going through all your ammo trying to get kills. After pack-a-punching, your 100 round mag doubles to 200 for each gun. This makes it easy to tear through zombies, especially if you shoot one of them 50 or so bullets ahead of the other so you can continuously shoot even while the other one needs to reload. And that's exactly how we fought the Mega Abomination, firing it for basically the entire minute 38 that we were fighting it for. The fight against the HVT was almost identical, taking only a second more to end it. And against the Stormcaller, it's admittedly not the strongest. During my fight with it, I had to run and get ammo a few times, but all that shooting must have drove it insane because it went to a Walter White fugue state and drifted away and exploded after 3 minutes and 42 seconds. Despite this, I still think this is one of the better weapons in zombies and it's fun to walk around and mindlessly shoot with it. Ammo is an issue with it, especially if you're constantly shooting it like I do, but as long as you keep an eye on your ammo count, you should be alright. And the best aftermarket part in my opinion is the XRX IPv2 conversion version kit for the core 45. Using this gives you access to tax stance while boosting fire rate, aiming stability, bullet velocity, and range. It'll take away some damage, ADS, and sprint to fire speed though. And this is the build that I used for it. This might not seem that great, but it has the unique feature where the more you pull the trigger, the faster the fire rate gets. This makes it a monster in tier 1, allows it to compete in tier 2, and do a little bit of damage in tier 3. But when it's pack-a-punch, the mag size goes from 40 to 80, giving it all it needs to tear through hordes of zombies. It also tears through the Mega Abomination, taking it down in a minute 24 seconds. The HVT wasn't much harder, only taking a minute 42 to put it to sleep. The Stormcaller fight went down almost as easy, only taking 3 minutes and 5 seconds. I did have to leave to get some ammo for it once, but this whole fight was in the tier 3 zone. I don't know if the zone the Stormcaller is in makes any difference in the amount of health that it has, but either way, we fucked it up. Overall, this weapon is nasty, and it definitely surprised surprised me the most out of all of these aftermarket parts. And I think it benefited the most with the conversion kit than any other weapon in this list. But that's all the current aftermarket parts ranked. Let me know down below if you agree with these ranks or if I left something out. And all that other YouTube shit if you liked it, like it if you didn't, dislike. And if you're new here, subscribe if you like this kind of content. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate all your love and support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.